Hello, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Have you guys ever wonder about how does market work? Like, can we sell cars? Like, how we selling oranges? Or can we sell pens? Like, we are selling an electricity. So there might be some differences. And if they are different, why? And what is the factor of their differences? Hello, uh, my name is Muhammad Emma Hakim, and today I will be explaining about Shona. Hello guys, my name is Muhammad Firdaus bin Saizul. Hi, my name is Muhammad Shaiwan bin Ilyas. So today we are going to talk about market structure. Before we go further, I'm going to talk about firm. Firm is an institution that hires or buys factors of production to sell final goods or in an easy way. Firm is a that gets input to produce the output. So, factors of production is uh, labor, land, and etc. Okay. So, when we're talking about input and output for the firm, we can see their goals are maximizing their profit and to minim minimizing their cost. Okay. So, for the firm as an institution, they have their own equilibrium of the firm. They are not the same as the market demand and supply. So the equilibrium of firm is a point where they get their maximum profit or if they lost loss they get their loss as in minimum loss so to find the equilibrium point of the firm there are two approaches number 1 is the total approach total approach is the simplest way to find the maximum Profit is when we talk about the profit, we all know that profit is a revenue minus cost. So total approach is the direct way to find the equilibrium of the firm, which is total revenue minus total cost. So that is the total approach. So next is number two approaches is marginal approach, which is they define as marginal when the marginal revenue equals to the marginal cost. That is how we get the equilibrium point of the firm. So we continue to the market. So market defined as a situation when the producer or the seller meet the buyer. So that is market. And market structure, the structure of the market. So that market structure is a size and distribution of the market itself. Or in an easy word is is the behavior of the buyer and seller toward the market. So when you, when we're talking about the market structure, there are different type of market structure and what define its type and what is the difference between each type. So what is the factor that differentiate the market is that number one is the type of the product itself, type of goods. Number two is the price control power which means the who is the one that control the power of the price and the third one is the entry exit is it easy to enter the market or is it very hard okay so we continue to the type of the market structure there are four type of market structure first is the perfect competition number 2 is monopoly number 3 is monopolistic and number 3 is and number 4 is oligopoly so first we go through the perfect competition perfect competition is a impossible to be perfect but we are defining it as to show you guys what is the meaning of the perfect competition characteristic of perfect competition is when number one is perfect competition contains very large numbers of buyers and sellers yeah but each of them is a very small firm okay number two the product the type of product itself is homogeneous for example close to the perfect competition is vegetable uh, let me take a tomato so when you buy when you want to choose a tomato they are all the same what different is that the different firm or the different seller that is the same that is that is the only different but the product itself is very same they are homogeneous or cannot be differentiated number three is the perfect competition is a price taker which means none of the seller or buyer can control the price which means the only thing that can control the price is the market demand and supply yeah market demand and supply is the supply increase and something like that and we go to the equilibrium point and that is the, the only thing that can control the price so we call it as a price taker because no one can control the price so number four is the entry and exit 
So for perfect perfect competition, they are considered to be easy entry and exit. It is very easy to enter and exit this uh, type of market because number one, there are no legal barriers, so you don't have to get license or anything to sell this type of product. Okay, so that is it for the characteristic for perfect competition. So for perfect competition, uh, we talk about the price determination for perfect competition. As I as I was saying, the perfect competition is the price taker. So when we talk about price determination, they are controlled or conquered by market demand and supply. So their graph would be the same as the demand and supply. Why are they same as the market demand and supply? Because they are homogeneous. Product are homogeneous. Uh, no, no one can control the price. Only the market can control the price. So there are no other factors that can control the price. So they are 100% conquered by the market demand and supply. For the equilibrium point on the perfect competition, uh, it is very easy to find because they are using the market demand and supply graph. So to find the equilibrium point, uh, just like the demand and supply graph. So next market structure, we are going to talk about the monopoly. So monopoly is very different from the perfect competition. Firstly, the characteristic of the monopoly, number one, they are, they are only one or single seller in large group of buyers. So that is what the monopoly means. Mono means one. Okay. So the only only one single seller. For example, I can take is like uh, electricity in Malaysia. We are controlled or conquered by the Tenaga Nasional Berhad. Number two is type of product. So the type of product is unique. It means that there are only one product in a large or in a whole industry. So number three, about the price. So who control the price? Of course, the producer itself because there are no other substitute or no competition. So they can control their price. And people have just accept that the price because the consumer has no other substitute to get. Number four is barrier to entry. This type of uh, market, I mean monopoly, they are very uh, hard to enter the market and very easy. So to enter the market, uh, some of them they need license, some of them need uh, legal support or copyright or something like that. So we are going to talk about this barrier later. So number five is when there are no competition, Number five would be the minimum advertising needed. They don't need much advertisement because the consumer will find them because they are the only one that can that sell this product. Except for the luxurious one, maybe luxury car, luxury, maybe something luxury. So they have to advertise, just advertise to show the consumer that they uh, exist. That's all. So we are going to talk about the barriers of entry on monopoly market. The barrier of entry number one is they get to control over the raw material. And for example, sugar in Malaysia, they are conquered by one market. So if the second firm going into the market of sugar, they get to be very hard to start because the raw material is conquered by the first firm. So number two is the copyright laws. So when we talk about the monopoly market, when one is selling you a unique product, so that firm can use the copyright laws to protect their product from being copied from other firm. So this makes the unique product as a only one product in the market. So number three is the licenses. So licenses, uh, we are going to talk about the government, government involvement in the licenses. We talk about the demand curve of monopoly market. So monopoly market is a single seller. So uh, it should be very inelastic because people are going to buy it even the price is high. But at one, but that is not the entire reason of being elastic, because uh, one single seller does not mean that people want that one thing so much. Okay, for example, the electricity. When the price of electricity is high, people make choice to decrease the usage of electricity. Uh, another example is a luxurious thing, a unique product. 
So any product is getting high in price, people avoid to buy that price. But it is more to elastic curve because they are only one single seller. So the curve would be downward sloping. So it depends on the law of demand. So the elasticity or inelasticity of the market monopoly, it is defined as elastic when the marginal revenue is more than zero. So when it is at elastic curve, when the price is increased, the total revenue would be decreased. So it is an inelastic curve when the marginal revenue is less than zero. So when at this point, when the price is increased, the total revenue will be increased too. So we move to the other type of market structure, which is uh, monopolistic. So monopolistic, uh, the characteristic of monopolistic uh, there are relatively large number of sellers or buyers and each of the firm is uh, considered to be small. Different from the perfect competition, the second characteristic for monopolistic market is a, the product itself is differentiated or it, it is not homogeneous. It can be differentiated by a label, packaging, quality or any other thing that can be uh, considered as differentiated. For example, is shampoo. In the market, there are various types of packaging or label or brands. Even though uh, they are selling differentiated product, number three, the characteristic is they get to control very less in price. It is because there are very many numbers of substitute of the product itself. For, as I was saying, the shampoo, if one brand is getting high in price, then we can choose other brands instead. Next, we talk about the demand curve for monopolistic market. So, demand curve is considered to be elastic because it is uh, a differentiated product and has more substitute. When one brand got increased in price, people considered to change the other brands very easily because they are very much substitute from the product itself. Next. Uh, the last type of market structure that we are going to talk about is the oligopoly. So, oligopoly is a um, market structure with very few uh, firm but large, large firm. Uh, if the if in the whole industry only have only has two uh, firm about this market, so they are considered to be duopoly. So, the second characteristic is the type of product. So the type of product for oligopoly considered to be homogeneous or also can be differentiated. For example, homogeneous is petroleum. It is homogeneous, identical, but only a few firms and it is very large to get into the market. And of the whole industry, there are very few of them. And the type for differentiated is uh, cars, automobile or aircraft or something else. The next characteristic for oligopoly, the third one, is they get to control over the price because they are only few firms in this type of market but they need to consider their rivals' decision in terms of price, target customer, uh, advertising and etc. And this is called as mutual interdependence. Okay, for the fourth one is their barriers of entry. Oligopoly considered as difficult to enter uh, just like the monopoly but they are not impossible to enter like the monopoly. They are considered to be difficult because they require high capital and the ownership of uh, copyright and etc. Sharon is a period of time where a firm runs their business in a very amount of time. Uh, in short run, their profit can be varied into three types, which is subnormal, supernormal, and normal profit. I will show you how to calculate all the profit and also explain it all about the short run. Alright, so for the short, call, short run, uh, we will be looking at perfect competition, monopoly, monopolistic, and oligopoly in both in all three supernormal, subnormal and normal profit. 
as for the profit competition based on the graph we will see that AR is equal to MR which is average revenue equal to marginal revenue this only happens in profit competition as the line will always be horizontal uh, to find the max maximum profit price uh, we will use the rule uh, marginal cost equal to marginal revenue which is MC equal to MR so and to calculate profit is through the total revenue minus with total cost for the supernormal profit uh, the we will see that the AR is higher than the AC, the AC at max profit price uh, so when calculating the total revenue minus with total cost we will get it more higher than zero the firm will gain profit from the perfect competition in the short run for the normal profit the, the average revenue and the average cost is at the same level at max profit price so when the total revenue minus the total cost it will equal to zero so it will have no net differences so as we can see from the graph and for the subnormal profit we will you see that the AR is lower at, than AC at max profit price so when total revenue minus the total cost it will be lesser than zero and it will cost loss and as for monopoly the marginal revenue is downward sloping uh, and the max profit price is also through the MC equal to MR and to calculate the profit is also through total revenue minus with total cost so in subnormal uh, the AR will be higher than AC at max profit price uh, the AR here is black in color uh, and the AC here is green in color so the same from before the the total revenue at minus with total cost will cost profit and the same goes as normal uh, the total revenue minus with total cost will be equal to zero and there will be no net differences as the AR and the AC is at the same level at max profit price while for the subnormal it is also the same as the perfect competition uh, the AR will be lower than the AC at max profit price and it will cost loss as the total cost is higher than the total revenue as for monopolistic we will see that MR is also downward sloping just like monopoly but the difference is that monopolistic MR is more elastic than the monopoly MR but it will also follow the same rule which, which is MC equal to MR to find the profit price and calculate profit is through total revenue minus with total cost and so for the supernormal the, as usual the AR is higher than the AC and the total revenue will minus with total cost will cause the firm to have profit as the total revenue is higher than the total cost while at normal AR is the same level as AC at max profit price uh, and the total revenue will, e will equal to the total cost as there is no net differences and for the subnormal the AR is lower than the AC at max profit price uh, as the total cost is higher than the total revenue the firm will uh, suffer losses from this and for the oligopoly and the, finally for the oligopolistic for, for the oligopolistic the graph is kink halfway uh, this is due to the two possibilities uh, so to find the max profit price is through the rule MC equal to MR but that but as long the marginal cost intersect with the marginal revenue at the vertical gap the max profit price is at king this time which is at the moment there will be from elastic to inelastic but 
but all the way to calculate the profit is the same as before which is total revenue minus with total cost for the super normal the AR is higher than the AC at max profit price and the total revenue will be minus with total cost will cause the film to gain profit from it well if the normal well if the firm gain normal profit which is AR is the same level as AC uh, then the total revenue will equal to total cost which will make the firm to gain no net differences and as for the oligopolistic subnormal profit uh, the AR is lower than AC at max profit price this is due to because the total cost is higher than the total revenue uh, the firm will suffer loss from this uh, so now I'm gonna tell you and explain to you about what is a long run in a market structure so what is a long run? long run is a period of time in which all factors of production and cost are viable in the long run firm are able to adjust all costs whereas in the short run firm are only able to influence price through adjustment made to production level so the additionally while a firm may be monopoly in the short term they may expect competition in the long run so next i'm going to tell you how a long run works a long run is a time period during which a manufacturer of producer inflexible in its production decision businesses can either expand or reduce production capacity or enter or exist and an industry based on expect profits firm examining a long run understand that they cannot alter level of production in order to reach an equilibrium between supply and demand but in microeconomics, the long run is a period when the general price level contractual wage rates and expectation adjust fully to the state of the economy in contrast to the short run when this variable may not fully adjust so i give you an example of a long run a business with a one year lease will have its long run defined as any period longer than year since it is not bound by lease agreement after that year in the long run the amount of labor size of the factory and production processes can be altered if need to be suit the needs of the business or leisure lease user then don't you forget also a long run have a special consideration so what is the consideration over the long run, a firm will search for production technology that allows it to produce the desired level of output at the lowest cost. If a company is not producing at its lowest cost possible, it may lose market share to competitors that are able to produce and sell at minimum cost. So next, I give you a structure, a long run in type of firm so firstly is a perfect competition in the long run a firm is free to adjust all its inputs new firm can enter any market existing firm can leave their market also we shall see in, the, in this section that the model of perfect competition predicts that at a long run equilibrium production takes place at the lowest possible cost per unit and that all economic profits and loss are eliminated. So I give you adjustment to long run equilibrium in perfect competition. Firstly, if most firm are making abnormal profit in the short run, this encourage the entry of new firm into the industry. Second, this will cause uh, an outward shift in market supply forcing down the price. Third, the increase in supply will eventually reduce the price until price is, is equal long run average cost. At this point, each firm in industry is making normal profit. Fourth, 
other thing remain the same. There is no further incentive for movement of firm in and out of the industry and a long run equilibrium has been established. This is shown in the next diagram. And five, an increase in market supply. So next, the second is a long run in monopoly. In discussion of perfectly competitive market structure, a distinction was made between short run and long run market behavior. In the long run, all input factors are assumed to be viable, making it possible for firm to enter and exit the market. The consequence of this entry and exit of firm was that each firm economic profit will reduce to zero in the long run. But the distinction between the short run and the long run is not as important in case of a monopolistic market structure. The existence of high barrier into the entry prevent firms from entering the market even in the long run. Therefore, it is possible for the monopolists to avoid competition and continue making positive economic profits in the long run. So next, uh, long run in the monopolistic. The difference between the short run and the long run in a monopolistically competitive market is, the, is that in the long run new firm can enter the market which is especially likely if firm are earning positive economic profit in the short run. In the short run. New firm will be attracted to this profit opportunity and will choose to enter the market in the long run. In contracts to monopolistic market, no barrier to entry exists in monopolistically competitive market. Hence, it is quite easy for new firm to enter the market in the long run. So the lastly is oligopoly. The long run in oligopoly. In oligopoly, it's so easy to understand because in the long run, economic profit are equal to zero. So there is no incentive for entry or exit in the long run. Each firm is earning exactly what is worth. The opportunity cost of all resource. In the long run equilibrium, profit are zero. So the calculation is pi LR equal to zero and the price equal to the minimum average cost point uh, like a P equal to minute AC equal to MC. So overall, you can understand that the long run is a time, a period of time in which all factors of production and cost are variable. Second, when the long run average cost which means LRSC falls, it means output is increasing. And if it rise, the firm experience uh, this economy of scale. And last, firm will search for production technology that allow it to produce the desired level of output at the lowest cost.